Hey guys, Cool Domino here. This will be a tutorial video on how to inspect a Thunderbolt rotator motor and how to run it. And let's get started. Now, just a little disclaimer: your motor may vary in the style of this motor. Like this is a Doer motor right here. Sometimes you can be a Dayton motor or sometimes other brands of motors as well. But it should be pretty much the same. If your motor has a little looks a little different, please let me know on Instagram and I'll try to help you figure that out. So yeah, let's go ahead and get into the tools. So the tools that you're going to need, you're going to need a multimeter like this right here. With some, with some probes, so you might need some probes as well. A pair of welding pliers or any kind of pliers, needle nose pliers. Um, you're also going to need a 5 30 seconds Allen wrench. I believe that's the size. Yeah, 5 30 seconds. You may need an adjustable wrench. You also, you're going to need a Phillips or a flathead screwdriver, depending on what kind of motor you have. A socket wrench, socket may vary depending on your motor. And, um, and you may need a switch box. Um, this is just an optional tool, but it's nice to have a switch box with a loop of wire. Or you can just separate one of the wires. And you're also going to need a 120 or 240 volt power cord. I'm using a 120 volt power cord. So let's go ahead and get started. This is the capacitor compartment. All motor, most electric motors have them. So to do that, you can either use your socket wrench or a filter flat screwdriver to take these off. You don't have to take one out all the way, so just loosen that one a little bit. While the other one, you might want to take out all the way. There you go. You also might want to grab a magnet as well so you can put all the hardware on and you can stick it somewhere on the motor, just like that. Now once you've got the screws on, then just slide this away from the screw that you left in place. And then you should be able to gain access to the capacitor. The capacitor might be a little tight in there, so it might take some strength pulling out, but there you go, you got it like that. Check in here as well to see if it's also nice and clean, make sure there's no cobwebs or nests or anything. Now this is a capacitor. This capacitor may hold some charge, and that's where your pliers are coming handy. To simply take a pair of pliers like this right here, these are just welding pliers, and just simply short the two terminals of the capacitor to make sure it's discharged. Just hold it there for a couple seconds, and it should be charged discharged all the way. You want to leave this open for now. Next thing that you want to do is you want to come over to the wheel right here, the pulley. The pulley wheel. Go ahead and grab your Allen wrench. There's like a little screw right here. It's sometimes hard to see. You, kind of, you might have to look around on it, but it's usually on the 4 RPM setting. Um, it might be very tight, so it might start this way first. So, to get that started. You don't, and once you get it started, you don't have to loosen it all the way. There you go. Now it's hard to start. Now you can just loosen it, like give it a couple turns, and then you don't have to take it all the way. Now it just should slide right off, just like that. Now here's the important part. This is the key right here. Make sure you keep this in a special place. So I'm going to put on the magnet for now. This is probably not magnetic. No, it's not. So just to go ahead and set this off this side. Now you have the motor exposed. And what you want to do now is you want to grab your wrench right here. Your adjustable wrench. And locate the uh, locate these screws on the other side right here. Screws are bolts. Go ahead and use your adjustable wrench to hold the nut on the other side while you use the socket wrench to undo some of the screws. And it takes a while to get them started, but to get it started, you should be able to take it off by hand. Take the screw out completely. Take the washer, stick it on the magnet. If you have one. Now sometimes your screws do not want to come out. I think you might have to unthread them all the way. Do the same thing on all of them. I'll be right back. Now, since you got all the screws out, go ahead and take the magnet off right here. It can be very strong on there, depending on what kind of magnet you have. And just set it off to the side for now with the rest of the hardware. Now, this is where you have to be very careful. You want to stand up the motor like this. Make sure the shaft is facing up. Now, this is the wheel. This is the top part right here. Simply just take that off, just like that. Now, once you got that done, you should be able to pull this out, but it might be very tight in there. Once you get it out, you have to be very, very careful. You have to pull it just straight out. And there you go. You have this taken out. This is the armature right here. 
Maybe a little dirty, but the armature should be okay. Also test this little function right here. Just simply push in it and let go. This part disengages the capacitor. Oh yeah, make sure you don't lose this ring ring like what I just did. So just put that back on like that. And just set this off to the side. Now I'll stand this back up. Now this seems like this cap might not come off though. What you can do is you can take a screwdriver, put it against the cap, and grab a hammer and just tap it out. Might take a couple, couple hits. There you go. Now go ahead and just open this up like a door because there's some wires right there. And just be extra careful not to break anything. You want to check these kind of contacts right here. You want to make sure they're okay. Sometimes they don't want to engage, but sometimes they do want to engage. So it looks like all these are good. See, that looks like it's burnt, doesn't it? Well, that's not the case. That's not burnt. As you can see, if I move this, this, this twine out of the way right here, you can kind of see, I don't know if you can see on camera, but you can see there's an okay part. But if you're worried about that, go ahead and take a multimeter right here. And just simply measure the resist or set it to ohm mode, ohming con continuity. Simply set it to continuity. Now, what continuity does, it basically just tests for shorted out circuits, basically. Let's see if I, if I take these two probes right here and touch them together. It should make a beep, but why is it not doing that? There we go. And now you touch these two probes together, and it should make a beep. Simply touch one thing, one probe to the casing, and another probe to here. And if it beeps, that means your coil is shorted. But if it doesn't beep, you're okay. So in this case, you're okay. The city armature, go ahead and pick it up by both bearings and just kind of hold it. Give it a little spin. This is checking for balance right here. If this is balanced, it should be good. If it's not balanced, then you might want to think about getting rebalanced. But in this case, it's good. And by the way, if your motor does not have bearings, like this one right here, don't worry too much about balance. Putting the motor back together is pretty easy. Also, another thing to keep in mind, make sure there are no wires disconnected right here. Like that, wire goes out to the capacitor. These wires look okay, everything seems to be solid on here, but make sure there are no wires that are disconnected from the coils. And I'll tell you why in just a minute. Now go ahead and put this back together. Now this is important. You want to make sure those holes are lined up. The holes that are on the core need to line up with the holes on the on the cap. Or what you could do is you could grab one of those long screws that you just took out, feed it through, and just feel your way to the hole. Like in this case, it's right there. And you can just leave it in there for now. Don't worry about tightening it, and then just kind of and it's just tapping it back in place. Sometimes you might need a hammer to do this. Make sure this is relatively easy to get in and out. If it's not going in and out, just simply just tap it back off. And just realign it. And there you go. Now, this is another part you need to basically be careful about. You go and take the screw out. You won't need it anymore. Lay it upside down, right side up again, with the core facing up, just like that. Now grab your armature again. And just simply just be very careful. Do not touch the coil with the armature or avoid it if at all possible. If you scratch those coils, those this motor is trash. So just go ahead and just lower it very carefully. Once you feel the line, you can just lower it down faster, and then it should be good to go. Give it a little spin. That seems to be pretty good. Now take your the outer cap and just slide it back on, making sure you get those holes aligned. Just hold, simply have it in there. And just tap it in place. Like a paint can.
give it a little spin to make sure everything is aligned properly. And now I'll go ahead and stand the motor up like this again. And now simply put the screws back into those nuts. I'll be right back after I get those back in. Now, once you got the motor back together, now you should be able to put your capacitor back together. And remember, make sure it is discharged as well before you start messing around with the capacitor. So just go ahead and put it back in the container. Make sure, also make sure that this little notch right here, that faces towards where the capacitor terminals are. So just go ahead and snap this back in place. And then just slide this in place like that. And then um, go ahead and drive your screw in. Let's get the little magnet. There we go. Start it with your, start it with your fingers. And then finish it off with um, a screwdriver. If the screws are too tight, you can always use something like a socket wrench or something, or a drill. Now, once you've got the capacitor back together, you want to come over to the back of the motor and take off these two screws right here. These screws is where all your terminals are going to go. And sometimes there are two wires right here, and this is basically going to be your line right here. But we're not going to worry too much about that for now, so... Go ahead and take this cover off, like so. And there might be some wires in there, so it's springing out on you, so just FYI. I might, those might come out. And just again, take this, take your magnet and just have it somewhere on the motor where you won't lose your hardware. Stick your hardware on there. In case you're wondering where I got this magnet from, I got it from a microwave. And there you go, now that your cover is off right here. Now this is your wiring right here. So go ahead and take out the wires. Make sure all of your connections are secure. Just give each wire a gentle tug by holding it by the cap and see if each wire is secured. That wire looks like it's good. Test the next wire. That one looks like it's good. And test the final wire. And it looks like it's good. And uh, if there's no ground wire right here, it's your ground screw right here. If there's no wire on there, just simply put a ground wire on there. It could be any kind, but I recommend 14 gauge. 12 or 14 gauge for that. Now, once you think everything is good, just go ahead and take all the wires and put them back in the motor. Now, once all those wires are in there, take the cover and just put it back, back on. Put it back on. And then just put the screws back in. Now, once you got the back back in place, go ahead and we're ready to test you out on your motor. This part involves electricity, so if you don't know anything about electricity, I do not recommend doing this step. Now, what you want to do is you want to grab a power cord. I recommend one with the ground right here, but if you can't find one with the ground, that's okay. But it's important, it's uh, recommended to have a ground wire. So first, now go ahead and take your wires. It does not matter which one's which, either 120 or 240, making sure that your motor is on the 240 volt setting. Your Thunderbolt rotator motor should already be on the 240 volt setting. But if it's not for whatever reason, I'll show you how you can fix that. Simply just take the two wires and just twist them together. Take a wire cap and put put that back on. Hold about a cap and give each wire a tug to make sure they're secured. And do the same thing on the other wire. And on the ground. And there you go. Well, your motors are wired up. Now what you want to do is take your magnet off. And, just, and I'm going to have this face towards the camera. Just like that so you can see the shaft. Now you're ready to just plug it in. Just be ready. If you see sparks or anything, or loud pop or whatever, kill the power immediately. So here we go. In three, two, one. It should just start right up. If it doesn't start for whatever reason, if for some reason it doesn't start, just simply give the shaft a good spin in any direction. And just turn on the power once you get it spinned up. And that's how you inspect the motor. Now, Go ahead, take your key. Here's your key right here. Snap it back on with the threaded side, wherever, wherever side it was before. And then take your 
your pulley wheel, and just slide it on, take your Allen wrench, and tighten down that screw. Just like that, and then you can go ahead and give it one more test to make sure it's all working. And it seems to be working. Thanks for watching, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video, which will likely be part two. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below.